Good morning and welcome to this session of morning prayer for the parish minister's training under the School of Ministries in the Diocese of Johannesburg. It's really good to be with you again. Welcome to my home, my chapel, uh, in my home, and thank you for sharing with us in this time. We do apologize for the technical parts of not being able to do this during or at the correct times, but we will get our technology correct. Uh, I will make sure that in from now on we will have better technology structures. Our morning prayer for this morning, uh, and it's the day of St. Benedict, Benedict of Monte Cassino. So we're reading from Saints and Seasons uh, for the 11th of July, Benedict of Monte Cassino, a religious from around 540 AD. One of the greatest figures of Christian monasticism, Benedict lived at a time when Europe had succumbed to Germanic invaders and was largely non-Christian. To get away from it all, he tried to live the life of a hermit at Subiaco in Italy, but his solitude there was soon broken by the many people who wanted to join him in his life of prey. He subsequently founded the best known monastery at Monte Cassino. To regulate its life, he wrote his famous rule, which has influenced the customs and constitutions of many religious communities since his time. This rule, which is available in English translation, is eminently practical and, though written for monks, can be profitably read by any who seek to live their life for God. It offers an ordered prayer, life of prayer, hard work and active charity, leaving little time for the normal ways of self-indulgence. Benedictine monasteries were soon widely established and in the confusion of the Dark Ages were oases of peace and learning. They may be said to have presided over the cradle of Western civilization. Several of the great missionaries who are commemorated in this calendar and who reawaken Christianity in Europe were Benedictine monks. Anglican Church also recognizes the way of St. Benedict and when we were together in, in March, we were able to do the session on the rule of life and the rule of life really comes along uh, from this idea of the life of St. Benedict. And most of our places of teaching and in the Anglican Church itself, our hospitality and the way that we welcome people uh, aligns back to the rule of, of St. Benedict. So we covered that slightly and, and in our March time that we were together. Let us have a look at the morning prayer. We'll do it from an Anglican prayer book, page 42. I will be doing all the responses uh, as I am alone, so there isn't anybody who is able to do them with me. So I will be doing the, the, uh, the whole of morning prayer as I would be doing it if I was on my own. So page 42. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world, to ask his forgiveness of our sins and to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to his service. The Lord lifts up the humble and meek. Let us worship and praise him. Lord, open our lips, that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Alleluia. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout and triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving, and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. 
For he is the Lord our God. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. If only you would hear his voice today. For he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm number 89. Psalm 89 and can be found on page 717 of an Anglican prayer book. And we will be reading from verses um, 39 through 53. Yet you have been enraged against your anointed. You have abhorred him and rejected him. You have spurned the covenant with your servant and defiled his crown to the dust. You have brought down all his walls and made his strongholds desolate. All that pass by plunder him, and he has become the scorn of his neighbors. You have exalted the right hand of his adversaries and gladdened all his enemies. His bright sword you have turned backward. You have not enabled him to stand in the battle. You have brought his luster to an end. You have cast his throne to the ground. You have cut short the days of his youth and clothed him with dishonor. How long, O Lord, will you hide yourself so utterly? How long shall your fury burn like fire? Remember how I draw to my eternal end. Have you created all mankind for nothing? There is the man who can live and not see death, who can deliver his life from the power of the grave. Where, O Lord, are your loving kindnesses of old? which you have vowed to David in your faithfulness. Remember, O Lord, how your servant is reviled, how I bear in my bosom the onslaught of the people. Remember how your enemies taunt, how they mock the footsteps of your anointed. Blessed be the Lord forever. Amen and Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson is written in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 34, beginning at verse 1, and we read to verse 12. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Fisca, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, and all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negev and the plain. What it, that is the valley of the Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar. The Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, in the Lord's command. He was buried in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor. But no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was impaired and his vigor had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. And the Israelites obeyed him, doing 
as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land, and for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of Israel. Here ends the first lesson. We say together, or we say the canticle, number three, on page 343 of an Anglican prayer book, page 343. We have a strong city. We have a strong city. God has made salvation its walls and ramparts. Open the gates to let a righteous nation in, even a nation that is faithful. You keep in peace the one whose mind is stayed on you, the peace which comes from trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord himself is an everlasting rock. The path of the upright is straight. You who are the righteous, God, mark out the right way for the just. We too seek the path prescribed in your laws, O Lord. Your presence and your power are all our heart's desire. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson is from the book of Romans, Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 10, beginning at verse 14. But how are they to call upon excuse me, but how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all have obeyed the good news, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out into the, all the earth, and the words to the ends of the world. Again I ask, did Israel not understand? First Moses says, I will make you jealous of those who are not a nation. With a foolish nation I will make you angry. Then Isaiah is so bold as to say, I have been found by those who did not seek me. I have shown myself to those who did not ask for me. But, the Israel, but of Israel, he says, all day long, I have held out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. Here ends the second lesson. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded your true and only Son worthy of worship, and the Holy Spirit advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. 
Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. Let us never be put to shame. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, be gracious to our land, and mercifully hear us when we call upon you. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, make your ways known upon the earth. Let all nations acknowledge your saving power. Give your people the blessing of peace, and let your glory be over all the world. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. The collect for today is the collect for St. Benedict, the collect of a religious. God, our Father, you inspired Benedict with your love to accept your calling and become a burning and shining light in your church. Grant that we too may be on fire with the same spirit of discipline and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we may trust in your defense and not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and ever-living Father, you have safely brought us to the beginning of another day. Defend us by your mighty power that we may be kept free from all sin and safe from every danger and enable us this day to do only what is right in your eyes through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. As the uh, document that had gone out and as we did last month we have a short time of reflection and very much listening to the the readings that we had out of the scripture today that all the work that we can do and all that we are doing in this world God has a plan and there is that whole way of how we are going to get through to the next steps to how this is all going to come about. Moses did not enter the land. However, he did not distrust God. He always went back to God. He went to the highest peaks. He talked to God. He prayed. In the same way, Paul is saying to us in in the whole book of Romans and saying to the Romans, which we can align to today, is we need to actually be part of the will of God and to find that. And that means we need to 
be able to to pray and to go to God. So just a short reflection on prayer is that prayer, as parish ministers, we are needing to come to God every day. As priests, we are asked and we are required to actually spend the liturgical prayer twice a day. And we need to align that to Bible reading. And that is why the liturgy is set in such a way that we can pray, we can read the liturgy, and we can respond in the ways that we can. And then once we have done that, we can go and live. We can go out to live in the world, in that glory and in that peace that we have, and the peace that passes all understanding. So what prayer is about is actually an encounter with God. Now, we are obliged to do our our morning and evening prayer, the liturgical part of prayer, if, if we are in a ministry that has been licensed for, for a liturgical purpose. The simplest prayer that we can pray is, Come Lord Jesus. And one of those prayers that we need to actually follow through on is, Come Lord Jesus. What does that mean to us and who do we pray to? So if we open our prayers, gracious Father, loving Father, loving God, uh, God, our God, my God, who do we pray with? Who do we pray for? Who do we pray to? So it's very important that we spend time to understand what prayer is and then to be consistent because for a lot of us that get into a rhythm of liturgical prayer, morning and evening and morning and evening, but it